Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm in Yoga Flow. Wherever you're joining me, whether it's right in the morning or during the afternoon for a little bit of a break or in the evening to wind down, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today's sweet yin yoga class, we are going to be working primarily with our supports, including our strap, two blocks, and a bolster or a pillow if you have them. You don't need to have them for this practice, but having the supports, you are going to be able to get into some of these poses that may be familiar to you in new ways. So they're just adding little different sensations, which is why I'm going to be using them for today's practice. So as always, if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash irenogaflow to support my work here. All right, let's take that pillow and lie down on the ground. We're gonna place the pillow underneath our knees. You can place it on a lower height or a higher height. Just play around with it. And we're gonna lean back and lie down. Okay. So it might be good if you have a more thicker stuffed bolster. Mine is actually just a department store pillow, so <laughs> it's a little bit more um, relaxed, but just have that little bit of an elevation in your legs here. Let the arms fall down by your sides. I invite you to connect to your seat, your bum, on the earth, on the floor, on the yoga mat. Noticing what sensations arise from you here. And when it feels right for you, I invite you to bring your awareness to the center of your body. I invite you to get curious about any sensations that are now coming up here in this general area. And it's okay if you're not feeling anything at all as well. I just simply ask you to open yourself up. Now let's bring that awareness up to the crown of your head. And when it feels right, noticing any sensations or feelings that are coming up. And continue to breathe here as you scan your body from head to toe. Moving that awareness through your physical body, moving it over your whole body. I invite you to turn your gaze inward, whether that's literally or metaphorically. You don't have to close your eyes for this practice, but just try to bring the gaze inward as they say and begin to focus on yourself. Okay. There's a lot going on in this world. There's a lot that our nervous system is responding to. So when we do this practice, we are bringing our nervous system back into balance. so that we can move in the world from that place of equilibrium of knowing that we're making decisions and making inferences from an objective point of view, from a compassionate point of view. And that extends to ourselves as well as to others. So in this practice, try to stay here. If there are distractions, that is totally normal. But bring yourself back into this practice, whether it's by focusing on your breath. Inhale and exhale. In breath and out breath. 
or simply noticing and observing when you have let yourself wander. So in yin yoga class, I just encourage you to breathe steadily and full of ease. I'm not going to offer too much in terms of how you should be breathing or when. I trust you to breathe in a way that allows you to expand and to let go of all that does not serve you. So whether that's taking those breaths in and out through the nose or inhaling through the nose and side and out through the mouth, just notice what gives you a little bit more uh, lightness, a little bit more spaciousness. here for five more counts of breath. One more breath, let's collectively inhale through the nostrils. Expanding your chest, filling the lungs with air, and at the top, slipping in just a little bit more. And as you exhale, let it go, soft in the belly. In your next breath, let's slowly flutter the eyelids open if you have them closed. We're gonna take the pillow, we're gonna, we're gonna, We're gonna dig our elbows in towards the mat just to lift ourselves up. And let's take the pillow out to the side here. Let's take the pillow out to the side and sit back up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move right into recline butterfly. So Bend your knees out to the sides, bring the toes and soles of the feet together to touch. And with the pillow, we are gonna place it right behind us. Okay? Place it right behind our low bum and lean back on it. So hopefully your bolster is long enough so that your neck is not dangling. You might need to readjust. If you let your neck dangle, that's Feel it out, it might not be uncomfortable for you, but after a while, that's because we are staying in this pose for a few minutes, it might start to feel um, unwelcome. So just notice and adjust, and if you need to, you can always move the pillow up or even take a block and place it underneath um, the back of the head. And with your legs and Sapta Baddha Konasana Recline Butterfly, just notice how the front hips are feeling and the knees are feeling. You should be naturally opening up and surrendering to this pose. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable, so you can always move the feet further away from you, right? The more you bring the heels into the groin, the more it might feel intense. So just modify and adjust. Your arms can fall down by the sides. If you want to incorporate a little bit of a stretch, you can reach the arms overhead. And slightly bend the elbows out to the side for a little bit more relaxation. All right, so wherever you are, whether you're practicing in the morning or during a break time or to unwind, right? This is such a good practice to help us get into our connected tissue and for us to be able to slow down. 
right? Like literally slow down by lying still, right? As much as we can. We're not looking for perfect stillness. So try not to measure yourself up against the standard of what uh, stillness is, right? Stillness is going to change because our balance changes every day. So it's not as though that day where you spent in one yin yoga pose for three minutes and you were in there for the whole time, that day isn't any better than a day where you have to constantly adjust or maybe pause or maybe go to the bathroom and all these little things. Like it's almost more of a challenge to do these yoga classes at home because you know, you are really your own boss here. So just know that and be aware of that, right? Don't beat yourself up. You know, we're still here. We're still showing up. And this little bit will make a difference. So feel your spine supported by the bolster, by your pillow. And connecting to your breath, to the natural rhythm of your in-breath and out-breath. And I'm just saying, what is coming up for you right now, if there is anything? halfway through this pose at the halfway point just check in with yourself do you need anything to make this pose more authentic to you try not to resist or fight and if it's really really hard to surrender then make those movements that you need to right or simply come out of this pose as well i often hear from people i'm not as flexible as i used to be I'm not as flexible as I used to be when I was a kid, when I was in my 20s, before um, this and this happened. And whenever I hear that, I, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for compassion for ourselves, right? Like we are not going to be the same as we were when we were a kid. Our bodies, our lifestyles, the stresses, the the obligations that we have change and it is abusive of us to expect that our bodies will stay the same when they are under the same parameters of this life as we are right meaning that our bodies will change and that's okay right like if our lifestyles have changed so we cannot do the things that we did when our bodies are more flexible and strong, when we were a kid and our skeletons are literally still growing, we cannot really truly compare ourselves and say, oh, I've fallen off the wagon or I'm not as good as I used to be, right? But that sentence, aside from that little bit of shame and judgment we may have of ourselves, also indicates that you do have the awareness of how your body feels, right? And knowing how our bodies move through space. So this time that we take to really get still on our mat is again to bring that awareness inwards and start to notice, right? Because there are a lot of signs and a lot of clues a lot of ways to stimulate and awaken our prana, our life force, our energy, right? 
then this might not be the practice that you need because there are different ways to rest or there are different ways to work with protecting and awakening our energy. But because in general, our society is so go, 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 these practices like yoga, whatever style we practice are so beneficial on one way or another. So let's take a collective inhale here, breathing in through the nose. At the top, sip a little bit more. And exhale out. Again, dig the elbows on the floor, or if you find that painful, you can always grab onto the outsides of your mat to pull yourself up. Slightly tucking in the chin to give yourself a little bit more support and walk yourself up very slowly and gently. Take the block with you. And what we're gonna do is with our legs in butterfly, we're gonna place the block right underneath our ankles. So you might wanna lift the feet and place them on top of the block, okay? And again, take some time to assess how this new position feels for you. You might need to readjust whatever you need to make this practice um, safe and open enough for you, right? We don't want any pain sensations here. A little bit of discomfort, a little bit of a challenge is okay. So just notice for yourself what you're feeling and how you're feeling during um, and coming in and coming out of a pose will change. So also just be aware of that. With your ankles on top of the block, grab onto the tops of the feet, and we're gonna inhale, lift, lengthen, remove all the curves in our spine as much as we can, because we can't technically lengthen the spine, but just removing those curves so it gives that impression that we are lengthening it. We're gonna exhale and fold forward. So you can let the elbows, the forearms rest on the shins and just slightly bow. So if you're someone like me, who is able to reach the forehead pretty comfortably towards the floor in butterfly, notice how placing the block underneath you is uh, stopping your movement forward. You might notice this might actually be um, easier for you um, with the block underneath your ankle. So just notice. There's no right or wrong way. There's no secret ingredient, right? Because all of our bodies are built so differently. We've inherited different things from our families, from our ancestors. So just be really aware, mindful of that, all right? And catch yourself when you are making a judgment, a value judgment on yourself. This is not a place for that. <laughs> this is a place for us to be aware and observing without reacting on that uh, stimulation, right? Taking a pause, taking a step back so that we can move in the world in the ways that we would like to, in the ways that make us feel like ourselves, in ways where we can give back. Sometimes it can be hard when we're not even aware of how we're speaking about ourselves to ourselves. So continue to breathe, inhale and exhale. Just noticing how this is feeling in the hips. Breathe into any areas of tension and resistance <clears throat> as much as you can.
Relax your shoulders, soften your jaw. Soften the space in between the eyebrows, the eyebrows themselves. Last few final breaths here. Let's take one more inhale here. And exhale. Inhale, slowly lift up. And extend the legs one after the other and move the block out to the side. And just shake out the legs. Okay. Let's come into a tabletop position. In our tabletop position, let's do some few rounds of cat-cow here. Inhale, soften the belly, look up towards the sky. And as you exhale, lead with the tailbone, then round the shoulders and tuck in the chin. Okay, inhale, lift the tailbone up, soften the belly towards the floor and look up, arching your spine. And as you exhale again, lead with the tailbone down, round the shoulders and then tuck in your chin. So just do that a few more times. And once more. Inhale, lift the right leg up parallel to the floor. And as you exhale, bring the right knee in towards your chest and then step the right foot in between your hands or just to the front of the mat. Heel toe, the right foot to the width of the right side of the mat. Your right hand is gonna come naturally on the inside of the mat, right? We're gonna place the block. We're gonna place the block right where our foot was and place the right foot on top of the block, all right? You might need to readjust. So tuck the back toes and bring the left knee away from you, from towards the back of the mat. 
Okay, and begin to sink the left hip towards the floor. And breathe here in this dragon pose. Okay. If you want to give yourself a little bit of a wrist stretch, you can also place the fingers to the back of the room. I'm going to do this. And simply breathe. Many people think that if you have your fingers pointing to the back of the room, you can now make fists and press your knuckles down towards the floor. So while we're opening up our hips down, we're gonna do a little bit of some wrist stretches here. With your um, fists, tuck in the thumb, okay? And then you can return your palms flat towards the floor. But if your wrists are a little bit sensitive today, mine are feeling a lot of pressure. You can also grab your pillow and place it underneath your wrists. You can also take the other block. If the pillow is a little bit too soft and you find that you're melting, you can also place a block right underneath where your wrists are. And just notice that when you are dipping that left hip towards the floor, the lower that your left hip is towards the floor, you might feel more of an intensity as well. So you can always lift the back hip away. So do you see how my hips descend with my left hip closer towards the mat? Notice how that's feeling out, if that's adding any more tension or pressure. And notice when you move the hip back, perhaps some of that pressure is lessened off. It's not uncommon for people who regularly practice yoga, and particularly a very physically vigorous style of yoga, to not use props, to not use supports as they say, it comes from a lot of ego sometimes, but as you can see, using supports can actually help us deepen our practice, right? And we can make poses that are familiar to our body a little bit more challenging. It can make us go somewhere new. So in this practice, I invite you to think of props. Um, as having multiple functions, right? It's not just to um, give us support, but also to help us, uh, but can also challenge us and help us go deeper. Okay, we'll be here for the next couple of breaths. Feel free to adjust or modify or come out of it. that you're holding try to breathe into those areas I know it's really hard but try to with your breath to come back to a state of balance a state of being where you are steady and full of ease no forcing just surrender okay on your next exhale let's lift the left hip away from the mat and swing the right knee back behind us and we're just going to readjust the blocks right so with our palms on the ground inhale foot the left leg parallel to the floor and step the left foot in between the hands right now heel toe the left foot out to the width of the mat left palm inside of the left foot and where the left foot goes i want you to place that block underneath um, where your foot was okay and that's going to be your position. With the back toes tucked, you can begin to inch that back knee away from you. You can also keep it where it is as well. For me today, leaning my hip down, 
and placing my hands on a block is giving me a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a kick. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with that. But feel free to make this dragon variation yours. So if you don't like how it's feeling to sink the right hip towards the floor, move it away, okay? And if you'd like, you can also keep that right knee where it was. You don't need to move it, okay? If this is enough right here, don't really need to do anything here. And it's okay to play around and experiment with this. If you know me, I love hip exercises. I love spinal exercises. I think it's because I started with hot yoga. And that sequence is really, really conducive for backbending and spinal work. So if you want to work on that stuff, have lots of videos on that. So I invite you to notice what is happening, what is going on in your body right now without any judgments. I'm just simply observing, right? And so a yin yoga class is not necessarily the same thing as restorative. It's not always going to feel relaxing and perhaps safe it's going to be a bit of a challenge, right? And even a yin class can be a little bit yang. <laughs> so it looks easy, but you know, it gets hard. It's hard. <laughs> and so simply giving yourself compassion as you move through and these poses, so important. Slowly begin to lift the back hip away from the floor. You can bring the left knee back. Move the blocks out to the side and do a quick little child's pose. You can widen out the knees if that feels good. Place the forehead on the ground. Let your breath nourish you and replenish you from inside out. Let yourself return to your physical body, to the space on the mat. Really bring that intention back in. Let's come to sit. We're gonna do two final poses before we wrap off today's class. And so take your strap with you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one nice big long loop here. We're gonna make one nice big long loop so that we can come into a caterpillar pose. 
All right. If you need to pause this video to get that loop, feel free to do so. But once you make that big, nice long loop so that you can slide the strap all over your body, We're gonna fold forward. So inhale, lift the arms up overhead, and as you exhale, begin to bow. All right, and once you've found that position that feels good for you, you want the strap sort of hanging around uh, the low back area. So right sort of where your, the back of your um, hips are. And just notice how this feels. And really let gravity do its work here and let the breath follow. The more you do these poses, the more you're going to naturally find yourself slipping into a deeper version or to new places. You don't really need to force or do anything and just see how you actually change just by simply being in these shapes. Got one more breath on this side. So inhale. Lengthening your spine. Imagine the crown of the head's going to touch the toes. And as you exhale, just release and let go. See how, fall, how far you fall forward. See how far you fall forward. And inhale, slowly lift up. Move the blocks out to the side. <laughs> you can move the strap off you. Today, we're going to end with our stirrup pose. So inhale, bend the right knee in towards you. Lift the sole of the foot up towards the sky. Grab onto the outside of the right foot with the right hand. And as you exhale, just bring the right knee down and out. So imagine it's going to touch the armpit, touch the right shoulder going out at a diagonal, your right knee. So just feeling into these sensations. Last few moments on this side. And slowly release the grip and let the right leg lie, lie long. Inhale, left knee in towards you. Maybe turn out the left knee already and then left foot up towards the sky. Grab onto the left side of the left foot, press down and breathe here. You notice how this is this feeling in your hips, in the thighs, and the low back. So you're 
wherever you are, just pressing down on that left foot. So this stirrup, half stirrup pose um, is a little, is a variation of happy baby. And we're just sort of splitting it off. One more inhale through the nostrils. And exhale out. Slowly release the grip. But let's bend both of the knees this time and let's do half strup together. We're just gonna roll our hips left to right, right to left, and lift the tailbone up and down. And when it feels right for you, you can bring the knees together and grab onto opposite elbows and squeeze yourself into one nice little ball. Give yourself a nice little hug here. Maybe even lift the shoulder blades, the neck up, nose to spine, the nose to knees, and slowly release and extend long on the mat. Place one hand on the low belly, one hand over the heart center. Taking this time to honor yourself for showing up to your practice. Taking this time to be with yourself, to know yourself a little bit more, right? And to love what you find, to accept and have compassion for what you might not right now. Taking this time to honor and bless everyone who is watching this video everyone that you are in community with. Recognizing that this work of self-care also requires community care, right? We cannot have one without the other. And finally, honoring and blessing Mother India for providing us with this practice, this holistic practice dedicated to our soul evolution and growth. So thank you so much for joining me in today's practice. Feel free to like this video and share a comment below if you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time.